Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakwadash, A and double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to all you I came out there pushing this word with all truth and sincerity, and to all you believers out there who believe in the gospel. And it's the brother Kwara Abai from the GMS Houston camp. And I uh, want to go into another lesson. You know, and uh, Lord willing, most importantly, uh, it'd be edifying. And what I want to speak on this lesson, you know, I was reading uh, the book of 1 John earlier. And um, uh, in the second chapter, and I'm going to start with, you know, the scriptures that I read. But what I want to touch on this lesson is, uh, as we see, we clearly in the end, man. We clearly see that America, which is Babylon the Great in the Bible, right? We clearly see that America is falling for those of us who live here. In America, you know, it ain't gonna be no bounce back. You know, we see they mandating, uh, um, you know, more draconian type laws on a daily. You know, we clearly see there's no way for the the economy to bounce back. You know, the 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 virus ain't just gonna disappear and go nowhere. Life ain't gonna get back to normal. You see. And as I was reading that first John, I had to ask myself, <laughs> is what else, right? And, you know, as I was reading earlier, I had to ask myself, what else is there left for us here? Literally nothing, man. You see, we already, we already, you know, brothers, you know, before some of us came into the truth, we lived lives that people wish they could live, you know? I mean, some, certain of us had certain statuses, was, uh, had the women, uh, whatever was the money, you know. So we did those things. And for those of us who may have not did it at a, a high level, guess what? We ain't missing out on nothing. <laughs> you ain't missing out on nothing if, if you haven't so-called lived your life here in America. Because why? One, shit, that's less sinning. <laughs> less sins you gotta worry about paying for, you know. And two, although these people live in their life, celebrities, you know, they the most miserable people, you know, you know, they um, you know, shit, drugged out, you know, gotta do a lot of sacrificing and rituals. It takes a toll on them. So really, even the the highly coveted things in this world, as far as being rich and famous, at the end of the day, it it. It comes with a price of failure, man. Look at these. Um, what's, what's that? Uh, Bill Cosby. You know, he was once upon a time the American dad. Now look at him, thrown to the side. R. Kelly, thrown to the side. So the point of us is, especially now that we clearly see we at the end of the world. What else is there for us here? Nothing. So the point I want to make in this lesson is that we should be. Willing and ready to give up um, these um, resources we may have when they get ready to uh, mandate more laws. We shouldn't be shooken like these other people and want to hold on to it. Because these people want to hold on because they think it might get better. They don't understand that when they look out the window, it's darkened. Like it said in Ecclesiastes, no, they're looking for hope. They think it, it might bounce back. That's why they want to still hold on to it. But we clearly understand it ain't going to bounce back. You know, that's why Yahweh Shai said, remember Lot's wife. Look, hey, Apostle Ramlob did a lesson earlier. You know, just let it go. If something get taken for us, just let it go. Again, the Lord got something else planned to be taking it from us. You know, so I'm going to get that first John, man. Um, Lord willing, this lesson be edifying. You know, because we shouldn't be stressing like these other people. Hey, if we really looking for the kingdom and we if we really want salvation, we should be more than ready to lose all this. Hey, <laughs> you know, let me get the scripture. You see? Because look, we about to literally inherit a whole kingdom, man. New bodies. You know, let me grab this real quick. This is 1 John 2. I'm going to get straight to the point. 15. It says, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. And look, we here in the world, you know, so it's many things around us to so-called get our attention, you know, to to 
to to fall in love with, right? To distract us here, especially if we in if you're in America. But the scriptures right here saying, "Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world." If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And the things that we have right now possess, they of the world. So when we lose them, we shouldn't. Now, of course, we understand we're in the flesh. You know, we still got emotions. You know, we still got these, you know, fleshly things. We might have to, you know, emotions that might pop up here and there. But ultimately, you know, ultimately, the Lord gave us the spirit to get through all this and to fully understand the end goal. You know, the end goal. Because look, what we possess right now is of the world. So once these things of the world get taken away, we shouldn't be taken away with it. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, right? Certain things that might make us feel good, you know, get us on our level. You see? Now at times, hey, it might cause to indulge in it a lot. But in the time we're not, it might cause us to what? Take it down a bit. You see, like Yahweh Shah spoke about it in Luke 21. He says, um, uh, rioting, uh, reveling and rioting, roughly paraphrasing. I'll read it real quick. I'm going to get it real quick. Luke 21. And straight to the point, verse 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart, your mind, right, be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. See? Overcharged, overindulging and stuff. And again, speaking to myself first and foremost, trust me, I overindulge a, a lot of times, right? But like I seen um, uh, one of the elder brothers in Dallas, he posted a lesson going into it's time to shut the doors on things we might have uh, overindulged in. Now that we're coming down, down to even more serious times, well, these things not might get taken away, they will be taken away. You see, it says, and so that did come upon you on the well. But let me go back to 1 John 2. It says in 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, women, right? Money, cars, clothes, you know, what we see on the daily that might tempt us. Again, distractions. It says lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Because once you get these things, it, it, it draws you to be more proud. You might look down on another person who ain't got something, you know, um, like they think in this world that gain is godliness, you know, that because you, you rich, you know, you blessed, you got, you know, Corvettes, you, bl you blessed. But no, that's not so because it says what? Uh, in the pride of life, this is not of the father, but of the world and the world passeth away. And that's the point. This going to pass away. Whatever you gain, whatever these celebrities gaining in this world, they're going to lose it anyway. Whether it's because of the mandates, they might have to quit certain jobs, can't pay bills, can't pay car notes. They might lose it that way. If not, Jacob's trouble still going to come around. Everybody still going to be pilgrims on the earth. <laughs> Money ain't going to mean nothing in that day. Cars, clothes ain't going to mean nothing in that day. It's going to be real food you're going to need. What are you going to need? And it's going to be a scarce uh, thing to see those. You see? And even if they keep <laughs> whatever all that through Jacob's trouble, got a nice little sprinter van they could sleep in, Jacob's trouble, guess what? Still at the coming of the Lord, it's going to be burnt up right along with them anyway. So again, whatever people get in this world is going to come and go. So for us, what we have, guess what? It's going to come and go, but at least we have the Lord to rely on once they do go. You see? It says, um, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof. So this current society going to pass away and the things within it. It says, but he that doeth the will of the Most High abide forever. And that's what we want to abide forever, man. You see? We want to abide. Let me grab this. We want to abide forever. This is... um. Hey, like, uh, let me grab that real quick. Like Peter asked Yahawashah, you know, when a couple of Yahawashah disciples walked back because they couldn't understand the sayings that he was uh, speaking to him, right? He, they couldn't understand uh, his sayings, right? So a couple of them walked back. This is around the time Yahawashah was saying, you know, eat his flesh, you know, drink his blood. And a lot of them was like, huh? 
But I thought the law was like, you know, talking about cannibalism. But no, he was being spiritual. Now, I'm going to get straight to the point. Because after he seen some disciples walk away, he looked at Peter and the 12 was like, y'all going to go too? Right? It says uh, John 6, straight to the point, 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. In this chapter, John 6, and the ones who right here in this verse said, went back and walked no more with them is verse 66. <laughs> Same thing, though. The ones who was in the truth and fell out, they got caught up in this society. The society of uh, Esau, which it says uh, his number is 666. You know, they got caught up in the lust, the lust and the cares of this life. You know, like it said, um, even uh, that the God of this world have blinded the minds of them who believe not. You know, they these people in the world, two thirds, they're not able to detach because, look, once they detach, they don't have nowhere to go to. They don't have the Lord for comfort, but we able to detach because we got the Lord, the Most High himself for our comfort. And that's what Peter going to say to you. How was right here? So it says from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Yahweh unto the twelve, will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou has the words of eternal life. So Peter said, Lord, what else we going to go? You got everything we need. You know, you got the words of eternal life. You got what's going to, you know, get us out of this captivity. You got what's going to truly give us real riches, everlasting riches. Lord, what else we going to go? That's the same thing we asking or how we should feel in these times. What else is there in this world, right, that's going to top what Yahweh Shai and the Heavenly Father God promised for us? Nothing. Not no car, not no house, not no woman, money, job. Again, so when these mandates come, it should be easy for us and Lord willing it is, you know, because we can say what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. But really, it's all up to the Lord. Have a, he got our story written for us. That's what we got to hope, you know, hope and pray. You see, but the point is, just like Peter and them, Lord, where else are we gonna go? What else is there in America for us? That's gonna that should take us away from the truth. Hey, Apostle Paul said it. <laughs> let me get that. Let me let me get that. Let me get that. Uh, that's what that is. Romans eight, I believe. So like I'm all over the place. Just want to put it on. Uh, as they say, put it on wax. But this Romans eight. And I get straight to the point. If I ever find it. So, okay, here it is. This Romans 8, and I'll start at 35. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Mashiach? And as many things in Babylon are great that could try. You know, but going back to the point, if we really want the kingdom, here in the end, what here what is here in America? That that uh can offer us greater than what the Most High Yahweh Shad already offered us, or uh, in a world of brothers and sisters not in America, nothing. Cause again, again, remember, everything we get here is gonna come and go anyway. Remember, Yahweh Shad is forever. His gift and blessings is forever. But it says, "Who shall separate us from the love of Mashiach? Shall tribulation, right? The things we go through, our distress, our persecution." Our famine, our nakedness, our power, our sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of the Most High, which is in Mashiach Yahweh Shai. <laughs> so he said nothing, no angels, no tribulation, no famine. Because why? In all these things we going to go through, we going to automatically rely on the Heavenly Father. You see? Right now he's been putting us through these tests so we can call on his name. It could be like second nature to us once we get in these times since we've been practicing it already. But these other people, they're going to be like Lot Wife. They're going to be looking back. <laughs> they're going to be looking back. You know? They're going to be like, like Job Wife. Once they get these things taken from them, they're going to be ready to curse the Most High 
and die. Ask them why, why this, why that, because they, they material things gone. But again, we don't have the mind of these people. They need this world. We don't need this world. We're in the same mind of the law. We wanted to pass away. You know, just like my job, people worried about their job, mandating the Jews. Look, I want my job to mandate the Jews. Hurry up. You see, really hurry up with the MOTBs. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> we waiting on you. What you waiting on? Hey, like the scripture says, the end waited for thee. Well, look, we here waiting on you. Hurry up. You know, we don't look again. Nothing else here should want us to stay. What else is it? Let me get this second measure. Let me get that like it's saying, Jeremiah, deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. Man, matter of fact, let me get that in Jeremiah first. And then I'm going to get um, second measure 14. Going to the thoughts of these people. How our thoughts shouldn't be like their thoughts. They worry about worldly things. But again, we focus on what's coming from the heavens. Real quick, Jeremiah 51 and 6. It says, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. It's not talking about physically leaving America. No, it said deliver every man his soul. We got to spiritually disconnect ourselves from this current society. You know? Because look, when all hell do break loose and the society fall, if we disconnect it, we're not going to fall with it. But these, these people are going to fall with it. Like it says, um, um, those that are joined unto him shall be thrust through with the sword, roughly paraphrasing. So if you're a part of society, you bound to go down with it. Like the most high told, told uh, um, Noah. He said, told Noah to get in the ark, and he said that uh he about to flood the earth and um and how the people was gonna get destroyed with the earth. You see, just like the people got destroyed with Sodom and Gomorrah, if you was there with well, the same thing. If you still within the society, spiritually <laughs> and physically, you're gonna get destroyed with America, man. You know, so it says flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, because this is the time of Yahweh's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. So the Lord is saying, look, spiritually disconnect right now. So when all her break do break loose, you don't have to continue to want to go to the system or this government for help. You already disconnected. Hey, another precept. <laughs> Let's get another precept, man. You already disconnected. This is Isaiah 10. So you don't have to go to the government. Isaiah 10 and 20. It says, And it shall come to pass that in the day that the remnant of Israel, the elect, which we hope to be, right? That the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Israel. How we escape? We spiritually departed. We no longer a part of this place, man. Hey, the scripture says now that we know we're Israelites again, now we are no longer strangers and citizens from the house of the Most High. We know we are Israelites again. This is where our citizenship is uh, at now. Our commonwealth is in the heavens now, man. We no longer a part of this place, although we still here. Hey, how was I pray for? He said, Father, I, I pray that you don't take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil. So we still in the world. But we're not a part of it as these people. Because when a destruction come, we don't expect to be a part of it. Like it's saying, Corinthians, Corinthians uh, 11, 1 Corinthians 11, 31 and 32. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it says uh, that when we are judged, we are just chastened of the Lord. So we don't have to be condemned with the world, man. Because we're escaping right now. So it says... And such as are escaped of the house of Israel shall no more again stay upon him that smote them. And that word stay in the Hebrew is Sha'an, which is to go to for support, to go to for help. So we no longer have to go to this government for help because we departed spiritually. Now who we go to for help? The Heavenly Father. What's an example of that? When, when a famine comes, we ain't going to have to go to FEMA and get the, the juice or the MOTB in order to go back behind a gate and eat. You know, pork and beans, you know, whatever whatever they have. No, all we got to do, wherever we at in the wilderness, hey, put up a prayer to the Lord. He might send an angel. He might send ravens to feed you. Might send another brother to feed you. Or he just might make it appear in front of you. Again, we don't have to go to this system for help. You know? 
It says, but, right? So since we don't, but shall stay upon Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, man. You know, that's where it's at right now. So again, if we got the Lord, what else, what else we need from him? Uh, a better job? Look, the, the job says, job's about to go be done with. You know? Hey, the, just like in Babylon, the right was on the wall, that it was that time... For that place to be done and over with, that age, well, look, the writing is on the wall, man. This place is done. You wouldn't make an investment into a company that's that's failing, that's going down. No, you're going to pull your money up out of there before it go down. <laughs> we ain't investing our lives, our time into the society no more. It's going down, man. You know? You see, let me get this, because... Again, our mindset shouldn't be like these people in the world. They trying, you know. They want to get better. They saving their money. You know, of course, we, you know, we still got to take care of our, our business, you know, pay our, you know, whatever it's rent, mortgage, bills, right? But we don't fully care about this place, man. Let me get this. It's second edge is 14. Now, check this out. And 13, it says, Now, therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people and comfort such of them as be in trouble and now renounce corruption. And now we are renouncing corruption. Because when the Lord come, he going to give a heavy judgment to those who are within wickedness and corruption. So we don't want to be the part of that. So it says for us, so let go from the mortal thoughts. Our thought pattern shouldn't be the same as these people in the world. We you know, build back better. You know, God bless America and you see, God, God just, you know, Jesus, take the will. <laughs> you know, whatever they be saying in this world. You see, pray for the troops. You know, no, man, we ain't, hey, these thoughts of these people, losing jobs, crying, you know, scared about what's about to come down, you know, the, the, the pipe. Hey, look, we don't have mortal thoughts as these people. Again, our conversation is in the heavens. We looking past the now. We're looking for what's coming. So it says, let, let go from the immortal thoughts and cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. What's the burdens of man? What these people starting to deal with? Mandates, lack of jobs, lack of food. You see, food prices going up. The burdens of man is starting to get, he is starting to get heavy on them. A lot of people ain't going to know how to react. But the Lord said for us, let that go. Don't worry about it. It says, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times. And that's what we're doing. We want more destruction to come. We want time to speed up. Because that's good news for us. Because now what we hoping for and truly want, once this place go, we can finally have it. Matter of fact, let's end it off on um, 2 Peter 3. That, that also goes into how everything in this society going to be destroyed. Speaking of America... You know, gonna be destroyed. And uh then that new heaven and that new earth gonna come. You see? So let me get this in second Peter three and I'm gonna try to read through it. And I'm gonna start at uh I get straight to the point, verse ten. It says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with the great noise, this current kingdom the the so-called white man, his rulership is going to pass away. And within his white man rulership, you got millionaires, billionaires, uh, niggas with material things, flo flossing on Instagram, rappers with they stuff. Guess what? All that's going to pass away. So even if you gained it, you're going to lose it anyway. You see? Here in the end, if you decide to say, man, it's too hard, I can't, I can't get by, you know, serving the Lord is just too tough because, you know, all these mandates, let me go ahead and get the mandate. Look, you getting that to take a L like I did a lesson a while back. You enjoying pleasures of sin for a season. Only a short time, you're going to get destroyed for doing it anyway. So what's the point? So it says... And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also in the works that are in the works that are there and shall be burnt up. The works. Everything you gain in the society gonna be burnt up. Everything you, you know, all the works gonna be burnt up. 
actions. It says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. So we already know it's going to happen. So us knowing this, what manner of persons ought ye to be in holy conversation and godliness? And that's going into our conduct. And yeah, that's going back to 2nd Ezra 14. We shouldn't be, look, in other words, doing the Lord's work and not being worried like these other people are going to be worried. That's our conduct. Seeking the kingdom, looking for the Lord. You know? And it says, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heaven shall be on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And that's what talking about when America get destroyed in you know, certain places around the world. And when that happened, it says, nevertheless, we, so although all that get burnt up, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwell of righteousness, man. You see? So ain't nothing, for, ain't nothing else for him for us. You see, it's going to burn anyway. But after this, that's when we looking to receive. That's when we looking to be, uh, to receive uh, what the Lord um, done promises, man. The kingdom, new bodies. So whatever, look, whatever you might can receive now, hey, look, it's going to get burnt up anyway. Whatever people got now, it was stunting, that's going to get burnt up anyway. So again, just like Peter said, Lord, where else are we going to go? Thou had, has the words of eternal life. It ain't nowhere else for us to go, man. Lord, willing this lesson is that a fun one. Give all praise and glory to you. Howl. Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim, Chakwadash. And with that, Shalom.